Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror drama film. You won't be alone. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a remote mountain village in Macedonia. It's sometime in the 19th century, and life in the farming village is idyllic and surrounded by the beauty of nature. A small cat is grazing in the field. While it's scavenging for food off-screen, the sound of something large and monstrous can be heard, crunching meat and bones. It can be inferred based on the sounds that something ate the cat. However, the cat walks by again, and it seems to be fine. The cat runs to the village where it sneaks into a small hut. Inside is a mother and her crying baby named Navina. She steps outside momentarily to admonish the noisy kids playing around the hut. When she enters the hut again, a horrifying woman with burnt flesh is standing over her child. She is the legendary witch called Wolf Etris, who was once a human woman. She now roams the village in search of infants and children that she can feast on. Tales of her horrific acts have long been used to scare the village children into not wandering outside in the dark. The Wolf Etris intends to kill and eat Navina. But her mother pleads for her life and strikes a bargain with the witch to spare Navina's life and let her grow up for 16 years. When she becomes a girl, she can then serve Wolf Etris and become her companion. Wolf Etris agrees, but not without taking something in return. She rips out the baby's vocal cords and disappears. The mother quickly takes Navina and hides her in a sacred cave where Wolf Etris cannot enter. She then pretends that the Wolf Etris really had eaten her baby. Navina grows up in the cave as a wild and curious girl. There is dirt caked on her face, and her hair is long and matted with leaves. She cannot speak, but she wonders about the outside world and yearns to be outside. Inside that cave, there are only two circular holes where she can see the sky. Her mother visits her often and takes care of her by washing her face with a cloth. Navina grows up, hearing that the devil had snatched her voice away. But she believes that her voice is still deep within her and may return someday. When her mother dozes off, Navina tries to sneak out, but her mother wakes up in time and drags her back inside. She warns Navina that danger lurks outside and will tear her apart once she steps outside of the cave. One day, an eagle flies inside the cave. Her mother is immediately on alert and throws stones to make the bird go away. She suspects that it's Wolf Etris in disguise. The mother chases the eagle out of the cave, and she disappears from Navina's sight. The girl just hears her mother scream, then dead silence. Moments later, when her mother walks back inside the cave, she appears to be physically fine, but her demeanor has changed. She is harsh and cold. She forces Navina to walk outside for the first time in her life. What Navina doesn't know is that her real mother was dead already, and this is the wolf Etris inhabiting her body. Navina is in awe at how colorful and wide the world really is. All the sounds, sights, and smells astound her. They arrive at a small house, where Wolf Etris devours a donkey. Afterward, she leaves claw marks on Navina's chest and spits on it. When they walk outside the gut, Wolf Etris lights a twig on fire and brands the claw marks on Navina's chest. The girl looks down, only to see her nails have grown long and turned dark. This signifies that Wolf Etris gave Navina her spit, a once-in-a-lifetime transfer of power from a witch, granting Navina the immortality and hunger of Wolf Etris. As Wolf Etris marches on, she starts grabbing her intestines and organs, discarding them on the path. She turns around and reveals to Navina that she has removed her mother's skin, showing her true burned self. Navina understands at once that her mother is dead, and this is another being. But because Navina does not know anything or anyone else, she clings to Wolf Etris. In turn, the witch teaches the young girl her ways. She shows her the world and how she devours animals for sustenance. One day, a male farmer stumbles upon Navina in the hills. He thinks she's weak, and so he attempts to prey on her. Wolf Etris appears and kills the hormone-driven farmer. Navina shows remorse over his death, and Wolf Etris tries to instill in her that she should kill or be killed. The problem is that Navina doesn't want to kill creatures or humans to survive. She thinks the world is beautiful and doesn't want to be a monster that would ruin that, so she never really adhered to Wolf Etris' ideology. The witch grows frustrated with her innocence and goodness. She calls Navina an incompetent fool for not knowing how to hunt and refusing to kill animals. One day, Navina becomes pissed off by Wolf Etris' insults, and she throws a stone at her back. Wolf Etris responds by drowning her in the river for a few moments before renouncing Navina. Afterward, Wolf Etris hunts down a wolf and takes its intestines and internal organs. She inserts them into a hole in her chest, and this gives her the ability to take on the wolf's form. She then leaves Navina alone. 
Navina wanders into a village, where she witnesses a woman giving birth and being assisted by other women. She steps closer inside the village, but is seen by a child. The child shrieks, and Navina hides in a barn, where a crying baby is left by her mother. The mother sees Navina standing over her child, and she immediately attacks Navina. Navina accidentally winds up killing the mother in their struggle. Gazing at the woman's fresh corpse, Navina decides to mimic what she saw Wolf Etris do earlier. She extricates her innards and inserts them inside the gaping hole in her chest where Wolf Etris marked her. As a result, she takes on the human body of the woman and now looks like her. Navina is mesmerized that she has a voice now. Overjoyed, she wanders around naked while the woman's baby cries on the ground. The woman's mother-in-law and husband find her like that and are surprised by her behavior. The husband is angry and ashamed of her, so he slaps her in the face. The mother-in-law takes her aside and washes the blood off her body. She tells Navina that she knows her son is cruel and violent, but running around naked is not a good way to fight back against him. Trapped inside the woman's body, Navina struggles to communicate and respond to the mother-in-law. Mother-in-law shows her kindness and gently teaches Navina how to do chores and be a mother. Her methods of teaching are very different from Wolf Etris' harsh approach, and Navina grows to be a competent mother and homemaker. Navina also meets the other village women. At first, she doesn't know how to socialize, and she still doesn't know how to talk. The other women believe that she had lost her speech due to her husband's daily blows. For the most part, Navina starts to thrive in that village under the mother-in-law's care. She learns how to be a part of the community of women and how to provide comfort and support. But whenever her husband is at home, she experiences abuse, but she learns to be quiet and submissive around him. One day, Wolf Etris visits Navina. She mocks her for choosing to be in another form of prison. She warns Navina that one day, these people she thinks her family will tear her to shreds. Later that night, the woman's husband tries to initiate a smelly workout with her. She doesn't know what is happening, and in her shock, she kills him accidentally during the intense workout with her razor-sharp males. Apparently, the life she had come to love is now over. If found, she will be accused of killing her husband. So Navina removes the woman's innards from her chest and returns to her old self. She then finds a dog and takes on its appearance. As a dog, Navina follows a group of young hormone-smelling men because she is curious about the male body. Navina lays a trap for one hormone-rich man by stripping naked and washing in the river. She catches his attention, and as expected, he follows her hormone trace deeper into the forest. He thinks that Navina is coming on to him, so he overpowers her with his muscles. But Navina kills him with her nails, takes all his organs, especially his smelly sausage, and then transforms into his body. As a man, Navina learns how to be a farmer. She uses his strength to plow the fields and handle tools. She experiences more freedom as a nasty man to run around and be wild and curious. One day, Navina becomes entranced by the dolls the village children are playing with. The suspicious behavior she is displaying makes the village elder think that the man Navina possessed had slept with Wolf Etris. They try to exorcise the demonic spirit out of the man. Wolf Etris once again visits Navina. She mocks her for trying another life and failing at it again. One of the village women seduces the Navina-possessed man and enjoys the great pleasure from plowing his grassy fields. In turn, Navina experiences carnal ecstasy for the first time. One afternoon, the village children run to Navina and tell her that one of the girls had fallen down the cliff. Navina rushes to the scene and finds the girl's crumpled body several meters down. She realizes that this is her opportunity to finally experience a good and idyllic childhood. She takes the girl's intestines and transforms into the young girl. The girl's family is overjoyed to find her unharmed. For the first time in her life, Navina gets to be young and feel the tenderness of childhood and family. She's surrounded by people who love her, and she blooms. One night, the children gather by the fire, and the girl's grandmother tells them the story of the wolf Etris, who was a normal woman originally. She was an old maid living in a village and yearning for a family of her own. But the years passed, and no man asked for her hand in marriage. Instead, she is treated as a servant by her own relatives. One day, the old maid stumbles upon a witch devouring one of the farm animals. She begs the witch for a husband and a child, so she can have her own life. The witch says nothing, but spits and claws at the old maid, who doesn't know that the witch has just bestowed her powers. Soon after, a man arrives with a proposition to the old maid's parents. He has a dying son, and he doesn't want him to leave the world without being a full man. So in exchange for money, he wants the old maid to sleep with his dying son. Because she has no other marriage prospects anyway, the old maid parents agree. So they tie her up and force her and the hormone-dying son to perform a weak family workout. 
Soon afterward, the old maid becomes sick and comes close to death's door. She gets this strange hunger for warm blood as a side effect of the spit, so she slaughters a cow and drinks its blood. The villagers discover her act, and they burn her at stake for being a witch. When the flames touch the claw marks that the witch had given her, it completes her transformation. That's how she became an immortal wolf Etrus, who hungered for flesh and lived eternally. However, her body still bears the marks of the fire that ravaged it. Navina grows up into a young lady in the girl's body. She becomes enamored with a male suitor, who adores her too. But of course, Wolf Etrus is still watching her. She tells Navina that his love will drain away once he finds out the truth about her. Navina and her suitor marry in a joyful ceremony, attended by the whole village. The elders remind Navina to be submissive to her husband's will. Their marriage is happy, and he genuinely loves her. She even finds the courage to tell her husband the whole truth about her past and her powers. He still accepts her wholeheartedly, proving Wolf Etrus wrong. Navina becomes pregnant soon, and all is well in her life. But one day, tragedy strikes her. She discovers her husband's body by their house. He was mauled by the Wolf Etrus in the form of a wild boar. Some of the other villagers blame Navina for bringing misfortune in her husband's life, and they make her undergo a cleansing. When Navina gives birth, she immediately closes the windows and doors to her house to prevent Wolf Etrus from taking her baby. She refuses to rest and just cradles her child. One day, Navina comes home from a short walk, collecting branches for a fire. She left her midwife in charge of her baby, but when she returns, she discovers the midwife's dead body. Wolf Etrus is already inside, looking at the child. She slices the baby's neck to kill it, causing endless misery for Navina. But then, Navina quickly responds by slaughtering the goat, feasting on its blood, and spitting on her baby in order to bestow her the witch spit. After that, she makes claw marks on the baby's chest and lights a twig on fire to brand the claw marks. Sure enough, the baby gets saved and is reborn as a witch, just like Navina. Wolf Etrus watches all this with tears in her eyes. She marvels at how human and filled with love Navina is, unlike her who was ruined by the world's cruelty. Navina steps closer to Wolf Etrus and yanks her innards out of her body, killing the woman who had given her her existence. The movie ends with Navina thinking about the lives she had led and all the sadness and joy she had experienced. She looks at her baby with newfound hope in her eyes. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.